Shrimp is the fruit of the sea. You can barbecue it, boil it, broil it, bake it, saute it. There's um, shrimp kebabs, shrimp creole, shrimp gumbo, pan fried, deep fried, stir fried. There's pineapple shrimp, lemon shrimp, coconut shrimp, pepper shrimp, shrimp soup, shrimp stew, shrimp salad, shrimp and potatoes, shrimp burger, shrimp sandwich. That's, that's about it. Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome back to Binging with Babish, where this week we're taking a look at the shrimp from Forrest Gump, specifically the multitude of preparations listed by Bubba, a list including and limited to baking, broiling, boiling, barbecuing. Oh, geez, this is a lot of ways. I think we might have to do this in two parts, guys. Why don't we preface this with a little bit of basic shrimp preparation technique, that is peeling and deveining your shrimp. Let's start by pulling off all those creepy little legs and pulling the shell open at the gap left by the legs. If you want to keep the tail on the shrimp, just hang on to it tight. But now it's time to devein. We're going to place a slice down the length of the back of the shrimp, revealing its intestine, which we're going to remove with the back of a small knife, trying not to break it. Oh, well, if you break it, just pull it out from both sides. Once you've got the shrimp's last meal out of its system, it's ready to go. So we're going to repeat this process with the remaining shrimp. I'm going to leave these ones with the tails on for our first couple preparations, as it makes a nifty little handle for your dinner guests. And we put these nasty shells where they belong, in the garbage. I'm just kidding, just kidding. These are chock full of shrimp flavor, and we're going to use them later on. For now, let's focus on the three Bs, baking, broiling, and boiling. We're going to start by making a very simple seasoning mix of kosher salt and freshly ground pepper, and we're going to add a little bit of baking powder. This is going to help the exteriors of the shrimp caramelize more quickly, which we want because it's very, very easy to overcook shrimp. So we're going to toss the shrimp with a little bit of our spice mixture and then lay them out on a greased rack on a parchment lined baking sheet, pop them in a 400 degree Fahrenheit oven for six to eight minutes until they are pink and cooked through. A very, very basic preparation of shrimp. For broiling, we're going to do the same thing sans parchment paper, throw them under a preheated broiler for about six minutes, flipping halfway through. And with this method, we're getting some nice charring on the tails, which can be desired for some recipes. Now, for others, we want the third B boiled or poached. We're gonna throw a couple bay leaves into some water with a big ol' hunk of lemon, a few generous pinches of salt, some whole peppercorns, and we're gonna bring this guy up to a rolling boil. This is the preferred method for making shrimp for shrimp cocktail. Now, we're going to add the shrimp to the boiling water, but then immediately cut the heat. Cover the pan with a lid and let it sit for eight to 10 minutes or until the shrimp are fully cooked. This is a more gentle way to cook them and prevents them from getting too rubbery. And if your recipe calls for cold shrimp, we're gonna immediately shock them in an ice bath. Once cold, drain them and you're ready to go. Now, let's take a look at the last simple preparation that is pan frying. We're heating a few tablespoons of vegetable oil until it is smoking, adding the shrimp and cooking for two minutes on one side. Make sure you're using the baking soda salt mixture for this method because it's gonna help you get a nice caramelized exterior without overcooking the shrimp. Once we flip them, we're going to lower the heat and add some compound butter. This is just butter that's been mixed with parsley and fresh garlic. We're also going to add a generous squeeze of lemon and give this guy one last kiss of flame to melt the butter and make sure that everybody is cooked through. You can plate these guys up with some bread or crusty pasta. What? crusty bread or pasta, making sure to spoon lots of extra herb butter over top. Now let's invite my friends Joe and Julie. They're some of my very first Patreon supporters, so they're going to help me do some taste testing today because this episode was their idea. Plus, I mean, how many shrimp can one babish eat? But even without their help, this definitely would have made it into the Clean Plate Club. But now how about we try and get into some more involved techniques? I say we start with my personal favorite on the list, coconut shrimp. I'm going to start by combining about a cup of shredded coconut with half a cup of panko breadcrumbs. Mix those all together nice. Then we're going to place maybe a cup of flour in another dry bowl and then make our wet bowl. That is one whole egg, maybe half a Mexican beer. And to make this a bit more of a slurry, we're going to add maybe a teaspoon, teaspoon and a half of baking powder and maybe a tablespoon of the flour. This is going to make a nice light batter that will sort of encapsulate all of our crispy bits. And what the hell, let's squeeze half a lime in there for an extra bit of tropical zhuzh. And let's get down to the business of breading our shrimp. Make sure you're going to use the wet hand, dry hand method. That is, use one hand for wet things and one hand for dry things. Simple. I only messed it up like three times. Rinse and repeat with your remaining shrimp and make sure you press the shrimp down hard into the coconut so you get as much of it stuck to it as possible. And then we're just frying these bad boys in some peanut oil heated to between 325 to 350 degrees Fahrenheit. Only for about two minutes. They cook really fast. Just cook them until they're nice and brown and crisp. Hit them with a little bit of salt while they're still hot if you forgot 
to season your breading like I did. And you can plate them up and serve them with some kind of dipping sauce, like a apricot sweet chili chutney of some kind, but I'll take them as is, thank you. Now how about those tailless shrimp that we poached earlier? What are we gonna do with those? Well, it's time to kill two birds with one stone and make a shrimp salad sandwich. To the chilled shrimp, I'm going to add maybe a quarter cup of mayonnaise, a generous squeeze of lemon juice, and then our salad accoutrement. Some fresh chopped parsley, some fresh chopped dill, some fresh chopped celery, and some fresh chopped green onions. Add a little fresh chopped salt and give it a fresh chopped little stir, adding fresh chopped mayo as necessary to adjust for consistency. Place on a toasted bun with some butter lettuce and optional tomatoes. And finally, something I can cross section. Not gonna lie, I'm very proud that shrimp aren't just spilling out the sides of this sandwich. Not the most impressive cross section in the world, but wow, does it taste good. We've got ourselves yet another worthy member of the Clean Plate Club. And now once we wash our hands, it's time to tackle the big one, gumbo, which relies on the holy trinity of green pepper, celery, and w whoa, little freaky, but that's just what I was after, finely chopped vegetables. Guess I don't need this anymore, but I do need six cloves of garlic. So let's get those all prepped before we head over to the stove and make good use of those shrimp shells. We're gonna start by sauteing them in a little bit of vegetable oil, just for five minutes or so until they take on a lovely color and fill the room with shrimp smell, at which point we're going to add some water to make shrimp stock. Let's start with two, maybe four, well, no, how about five cups of water? Seems like the right amount for the shells from about one pound of jumbo shrimp. Once we've let this simmer for about 20 minutes uncovered, it's time to strain it, and we should end up with about four cups of shrimp stock. You can make gumbo with chicken stock, but I mean, come on. And now for the very foundation of gumbo, the roux. We're starting by heating half a cup of vegetable oil over medium flame until it's almost smoking and then adding an equal amount or half cup of all-purpose flour. We are mixing this rigorously and constantly with a large wooden spoon that lets us get into all the corners of the pot, cooking slowly and patiently over medium heat until it goes through the different phases of roux. Ology. Rueology. If this is your first time making brown roux, do not step away. Keep stirring it constantly until it turns into chocolate. It should seriously look like some dark chocolate milk. Pat yourself on the back for preparing your diced holy trinity before starting the roux making process, and then slap yourself in the face for not slicing your okra, which is going to act as the secondary thickening agent for this gumbo. Saute everything together until it's all nice and soft, and then we're going to add the six cloves of minced garlic right towards the end, sauteing just until fragrant so it does not burn. Then it's time for that shrimp stock. We're adding it very, very slowly at first in a thin, steady stream. This is to make sure that the final texture of the gumbo is not compromised by your childlike impatience. Once you've got about half the stock in there, you can just add the rest, and we're going to season with a bit of paprika and some cayenne pepper. Next up, I'm adding some andouille sausage. If you can't find andouille, you would be just fine with some smoked kielbasa. I'm also going to add two fresh bay leaves and give the whole thing a stir and let it simmer for a solid hour until those flavors have gotten to know each other to the point where they're like each other's emergency contacts when they fill out a healthcare form. Remove the bay leaves and then it's shrimp time. We're putting these guys in here for a scant four minutes just barely enough to cook them through. And then to brighten up this sausage fest, a little bit of freshly chopped parsley. Cook for one more minute and then take off the heat and prepare to serve with a little bit of oven baked rice. You can see how to make rice in your oven at the link in the upper right hand corner now. And we're ladling the gumbo around a mound of the rice as is tradition. I think, and then we're garnishing with some freshly chopped parsley and some green onions. I really hope you can smell that through the camera because it smells absolutely completely insane. And as a lover of New Orleans culture and food, I found myself having to take a breather after my first bite, contemplating the gravity of what I had just done, the magnanimity of something so soulful, so deep and complex coming out of this, my home kitchen. Clean Plate Club doesn't quite do it justice. My soul has been cleaned, my heart. Okay, I'm going off the rails. See you guys in part two.